Brianna asked a question on YouTube about whether law schools consider your highest LSAT score or whether they average or what. Um, so I'll answer that question, but first I should explain why I'm making a video in my car. Uh, they're doing a crazy construction project at my place today. They're tearing out all the pipes in the entire place and replacing all of the pipes in one day. And so there's like 10 dudes in my apartment and it's just a disaster. So I'm like working from my car. Anyway, um, Brianna says, are schools taking the highest score or the average? Um, outside of Harvard, Stanford, and Yale, it's pretty clear that law schools only care about your highest score. There are systemic reasons why law schools only care about your highest score. These don't apply to Harvard, Stanford, and Yale because Harvard, Stanford, and Yale, they're always going to be uh, the top three in the law school rankings, no matter what happens, essentially. And uh, so they don't have to play the U.S. News and World Report um, gaming the system on the law school rankings. But basically, all other schools do have to uh, try to game the system. Law school deans get hired and fired based on the in you know small increases or decreases in the rankings and US News and World Report when they rank law schools one of the factors they use is the highest LSAT score for each member of the incoming class so there's a strong incentive for law schools to use that same metric um, if you consider two different applicants let's say that there's applicant A who takes the test uh, one time and scores let's say 169, pretty damn good score. But let's say applicant B takes the test four times, scoring 150, 150 again, 150 again, and then 170. Well, the average of uh, applicant A is obviously higher, took it once and got a 169, that's a 169 average. The average of applicant B who stacked up a, a set of one, 50s and then finally got a 170 you know that average is only 155 but according to u.s news when the school reports that candidate or those two candidates out to u.s news candidate a who took it once and got a 169 is going to be a 169 according to u.s news candidate b who got a bunch of 150s and then a 170 they're a 170 according to u.s news if a law school wants to increase their rankings, according to U.S. News, they shouldn't care about any lower scores you have on record. They should only care about your highest score. And they'd be shooting themselves in the foot, honestly, if they did anything else. So they have an incentive to only care about your highest score. So that's what they're going to do 99% of the time in admissions. Again, that doesn't apply to Harvard, Stanford, Yale, but it does apply to, you know, your UCLA's of the world, which is a damn good law school. It's just not in the top 14 and if they ever want to get into the top 14 they need to improve their numbers so they'll only care about your highest score not your uh any of your lower scores by the way the american bar association uses that same metric uh on the aba 509 reports that y'all should definitely be looking at please google aba 509 and the name of whatever law school you're interested in because there's a wealth of information on those 509 reports and you're just really foolish if you don't look at those 509 reports. But when they report the 25th, 50th, and 70th, uh, 75th percentile LSAT scores for the incoming classes at each school, those numbers are also based on the highest LSAT score of each member of the incoming class. So yeah, I mean, U.S. News only cares about the highest score. The ABA only cares about the highest score. I think law schools would be pretty silly not to follow suit and only care about the highest score. So don't worry if you have to take the LSAT multiple times. Um, one note of warning, please don't just randomly sign up for the LSAT and take it without any prep. If your practice test scores don't indicate that you're ready to take it, then there's no point taking it because all you're going to do is put a shitty score on record take the test when your practice tests indicate you're ready but then if you have a bad day on the day of the on the day of the test take it again and potentially take it a third time or a fourth time or even a fifth time if need be because uh, yeah schools are only going to care about the highest one so get fully prepared for attempt number one and then plan on multiple retakes that should be your plan um
Thanks again, Brianna, for your question. Talk to you guys soon.